So we're at Zua School, um, which is about a 40 minute boat ride from Imacita. Um, and we've come to visit another Awahun indigenous community. They've just been so welcoming. And they've invited us here today because um, like most of the communities we visited, they're having difficulty keeping their children in education. This is the, uh, the main tributary river. You arrive by boat, this is their landing port. to the early years classroom over here and this is where they study they have 44 children in this village one of the things i really love about this is the openness and the views that you get but also what they teach they have their own Awahan books which is unusual the government have only just produced this not all of them are Awahan, but it's really important to this community that they learn in their own language and the rest are in Espanol. Um, but one of the interesting things I find here is teaching them to make. So it's not just learning your maths and um, language, but it's also keeping the traditions of the Alton community so you can understand really why they have their own schools. Um, so you can see here what the children have made. Um, this is years one, two and three, making some really amazing stuff out of woods. The little boats. It would take me years to try and figure out how to do that. This here, is actually a portable seat. So we'll go to the next classroom. See what lunch is. Lunch today was some papaya, some bananas, some sugar beet. This is for years four, five and six. And this is their classroom. There's 29 children that go to school in this class. But this is all the tables and chairs that they've got. One of the first things they asked please can we just have something to sit on and then they also showed us what they make in this year group which are these hats just incredibly well made really really intricate and quite heavy and very strong a child of 11 years old would make these and it would take them one month to make the hat and they're really hoping that they're teaching them a craft that they'd be able to sell over here we've got the cooking utensils for cooking for the community, really nothing else. So utterly beautiful surroundings that you get a sense of the poverty. And then I'll take you to the kitchen next. So here's the kitchen. And the government give them a small amount of food um, this year to eat for the children. But from the end of this month, they're gonna stop it so the villager on their own. Much harder for the children to study with no food. So the school um, and the villagers would like help. They'd like help getting tables and chairs for this classroom. How can 29 children study? They can't properly. And they've got two really good teachers and a wonderful kindergarten lady. And then they want to go to secondary school and some can make it, but others can't. It's very expensive to go to secondary school. You have to board, Pay for your clothes and your books, shoes, that's a lot of money and it's a boat ride and it's half an hour up the river. So it's really complicated, very difficult for people to get out of their poverty. They can make it to primary, some will make it to secondary, they never go to university, it's not possible. Educate want to provide a pathway for this community so they can study at primary school as they can now, but they can all go to secondary school and then look for sponsors to help them onto university. Whilst they want to be engineers and designers, most don't want to go to Lima to practice it. They want to come back to their villages and improve the way of life and the quality of life. Education is important because it provides a sustainable way they can look after themselves. Giving this village help now is empowering them to be sustainable in years to come.